Hi there, I'm Jack, and these are my bits. They're pretty organized at the moment, but behind those translucent plastic walls lies a huge problem. Me. Eh? Oh, hi. I just can't seem to stop collecting crafting supplies. From toothpicks to tuned golfs. From beads to boxers. You're going to the pub. Would you like to come? Hell yeah, man. From paint to pet G. I've collected way too much to be healthy from my wallet, and it's starting to take up too much room in my apartment. It's even been sneaking into my son's playpen at night and chewing up the carpet. So I've come up with a plan. My craft budget will be limited to $1 per month for one year. Here's my dollar for January. I'm keeping it in a safe place. I'm hoping to release videos a couple times a month. I have several ideas, mostly centered around the games I like to play. Mostly Dungeons and Dragons, Age of Fantasy, Gaslands. But I also want to do some video game dioramas. But let's get into this month. In January, I felt the call of the wasteland, and I heated that call by making some tiny death machines that I'll use to play Gaslands. Most people describe Gaslands as Mad Max the board game, but I prefer to think of it as Mario Kart with more spikes, the board game. But really it's just an excuse for adults to crack open their old toys and play around with them again. It's like a huge shot of nostalgia injected directly into your eyeballs. I tend to use these cute little cars like these ones, or these ones. But for this build, I'm going to use a sleeker looking car like this Batmobile from last year's collection. I like these fins on the back and also this exposed engine. All these future victims get to get shoved back into the box. Next thing I have to do is cut this car apart so I can get into the insides. They're held on by these rivets, which I'll have to figure out how to get apart. Maybe spinning these wheels will give me an idea. Oh wait, how about I get my trusty drill? And can't forget about my trusty bits. This should do wonders on these rivets. I had to use some pliers to help get the pieces off. This car was made of four pieces, which is pretty standard for Hot Wheels. Next, I like to pick out the attachments that I'm gonna put on the car. This is my 3D printed bits box has a lot of guns and attachments for gaslands in it, including a lot of sci-fi weapons that I thought might look good on it. Like this thing, and this thing, and this thing, and this one. This one kind of looks like that other one, can't hurt to have two. And another thing, and one more. And that's it for this box. But fear not, there's more boxes. These Necron guns are pretty cool. Not sure what that is, but I'm sure it's pretty neat. That's a little tank or something. So little data pad decided to get the best of me for a second, but I got it in the end. And that's it for that box. I've cleaned up my workstation a little bit because this next box is pretty messy. This little piece is weird and cool. And here's its twin. Here's a whole bunch of bits all at once. This loose bead shouldn't even be in this box. This one shouldn't either. Another spiky pokey thing, part of a spray bottle, flux capacitor, a regular capacitor, a part of an inhaler, this thing, and that's it. To help the glue stick, and just because it's fun, I like to give the car a little bit of a sanding. I got a little carried away and used some emery boards. My desk and hands are a mess, but that look is pretty cool. I almost wouldn't even have to paint it. As I was cleaning up my desk, I found this sound box from a different project. I thought the wires would look good on the car, so I clipped them off. This little sound box has some cool shapes, but it's a little too big for this car, so I'll put it in my bits box for later. Thought it'd be cool if the wires ran along the edges of the car, like this. I used the extremely popular and well-known bottom of a soda can super glue holder and toothpick to apply it method to secure the wires to the car. But first I'm bringing back the silicon mat so I don't get super glue all over my cut mat. As Soon as I put this first wire on, I knew it needed more. But my hands were getting a little shaky, so I paused to get some extra wire and my helping hand. I then immediately forgot that I was filming, so cut to me already having put the black wire on. Can you, can you see it? 
it, uh, it blends directly into the car. It's uh, it's right it's right there. I'll give you a closer look, but what's this I'm doing? That's that Necron gun from earlier, just dry fitting it onto the car. Unfortunately, I had this pesky limb attached that I needed to cut off. Then it fit great on this side of the car. I found a slightly thicker gauge of wire to add to the gun here, and then I ran the wire along the bottom edge of the car. But my thirst for wire was still not sated, so I decapitated this old ethernet cable, cut off the protective exterior revealing the tasty juicy wires inside. These wires are much thinner gauge than the ones I've already been using, but they look a lot better at this scale. I ran one of those wires from the gun to the driver's seat. Then I attached the data pad to the hood and hooked a wire from there all the way to the back. It was looking pretty good at this point, but it's missing something. I'm not sure what exactly. But then I added this antenna, and that looks pretty good. I'll be painting next. So I sealed the car back up with a pretty big dollop of super glue where the rivets used to be. One last look before we put paint on this thing. And here we are over at the spray booth. I'm going to prime with this black primer. I don't really need full coverage on the primer. It's just there to give some tooth to the surface. And now it's time for the base coat. I'll be using this matte black. My idea for this car is for it to be flat black with some neon outlines, kind of like Tron style. I like to get the paint all over my hands because what's more fun than finger painting? That's right, painting fingers. Normally I mask up the windows so I don't coat them in paint, but this time I forgot. Luckily on this build, it just looks like a tinted window. Don't forget to do the bottom and give those fingies a second coat. We'll do the details with a brush. I decided to do a blue neon, so I'm using these two colors. This is kind of the effect I'm going for, so I'll basically just do this on the other side. And there we go. That's that side done too. Looking pretty good so far. Next up, the darker blue. And that's coming along pretty nicely. Next, I'm going to use some silver to pick out these details in the hood. This isn't the engine. Maybe it's like a cooling system or something. I'm not really sure how cars work. I'll give the engine in the back the same treatment. Same with these exhausts on the side. And just as I think I'm ready to move on to the next color, I remember that I have to do the fender. And after a more thorough inspection, I don't think there's anything else that I'll need to paint silver on this car. So I can move on to painting the wires. The wires will be painted in random wire colors, starting with this yellow. If you paint minis, you might notice that I'm not thinning my paints. This is considered blasphemy to the mini painting community. But for these models with these large flat surfaces and small amount of details, you can get away with a lot thicker paint and usually only one coat. And I'm pretty lazy when it comes to painting, so only having to do one coat, that's my kind of paint job. And there you go, one wire done. Next I'll do a green wire, and then this white wire, and a red wire. And then I decided this wire should actually be a pipe, so I gave it a silver coat. And that's all the wires done. They look pretty good. So now let's move on to this gun. It was a little adventurous here, and tried to do some object source lighting. I don't really know how to do object source lighting, and I've only watched one tutorial on it, but it looked fun and I can always repaint it if I mess it up. Overall, I think this effect can be classified as, well, I tried. But practice makes perfect, so you'll probably see some more of my terrible attempts at this in the future. Next up, the little data pad on the hood needed some color, and some little white squigglies to serve as text, and some dark wash on the engine to grime it up a little bit, and the hood too. And let's not leave the fender out this time. Thought I was done, but I forgot about this little antenna thing on the side. It gets a silver coat, and then this little blue detail to tie it all in. That's it for the painting. It looks pretty sci-fi, and I like how all the wires are different colors. Now I'll give it a top coat to seal everything in. Here's the glamour shots. I did a matte coat, and then just on the windows I did a gloss coat, which turned out okay. Alright, next build, and let me switch out this background music. Don't mind the pub in the background. I actually started this build before I decided to start filming. And this is the box I've been keeping it in. 
This car is going to be part of my slime team, which is more of a classic Mad Max style faction. It's basically the same process as the last build. You find some stuff and you stick it on. In this case, I've used toothpicks, Christmas bobble hooks, cut up plastic signs, which I'll show more of later, and a 3D printed gun. Not too much more that I'm going to add to this except for this corrugated cardboard and a little bit of green stuff to act as weld lines. I'll use this file to rough up the hood a little bit and remind it to pay its protection money and also help the green stuff stick to it. Then I'll knead me up some green stuff and get some water so that the green stuff doesn't stick to my fingers. Spilling was an accident, but it was a happy accident because it turned out the green stuff wouldn't stick to the silicon if there was water on it. And also I got to splash around in it. And then I set to work making some little wormies. This made a very fun sound. And really, what more do you need in life? Then I stuck those on and started pressing in little divots using a shaping tool. And that's how you make weld lines with green stuff. I also cut a couple strips of corrugated cardboard. Stuck those on. I decided to give it some cute little angry eyebrows. And that's it for this build. Let's move on to painting. A quick gray prime. I'm gonna get a fancy little rust technique going. I'll walk you through it. First, we're going to start with our rust color. In this case, I'm using this red terracotta color. I'm going to coat the whole thing in it. Next, we're going to apply a water-soluble mask. There's a cheap mask that you can buy. It's called hairspray. I like to use this stuff because somehow it's always in the bathroom. Again, coat the whole thing. Then we do the top coat. Mine are going to be this green skin green. Again, coating the whole thing. Brought the rest of my slime team out so they can witness the christening of this new car. Now to get that rust effect, you just take a wet brush and rub away certain parts of the car where you want the rust to appear. This will dissolve the hairspray and leave behind just that rust color. I'll do that until I feel like it's thoroughly rusted. Then I'll paint it like normal. It's red fins, yellow eyebrows, gunmetal gun, thick window and sheet of metal, silver weld lines, shiny spikes, and shiny metal plating. Last touch of weathering with this quick shade and these weathering powders. These are just ground up chalk pastels. And then I'll hit it with another matte top coat. It's really important to do a top coat with this technique because otherwise the hairspray might dissolve when you don't want it to. If you spill water on it, or if your hands are just particularly sweaty. All right, you've watched two car builds already, so let me just show you these two other cars that I built this month. Here's another car from my slime team. This one's particularly spiky. And this is my sweet tooth build from the game Twisted Metal. And that's all the cars, but I did one more build this month. Let me show you a little preview of what we're about to get into. This is another build that I've already made some progress on before starting filming. Uh, I've got my project box right here. But it doesn't all fit in the box. I've also got this tank that goes with it. And I'm going to steal some parts from this truck. I made a little drawing for reference. It's not very good, but I did find it helpful. I already made this head. And this truck will be the donor for the tail. Which I'll fix right about here. But first, I don't really like this claw. I'll drill a hole to mount the chain instead. I wasn't sure how to attach it yet, though. Maybe sprues? This dollar store toy? Popsicle sticks? Different popsicle sticks, skewers, ooh, I know, green stuff. It took quite a bit to actually get it stuck on there, but now it's pretty solid. Now from a different camera angle, we'll be using this crane for the neck, so time to mount that. I wanted to mount it just like this, but then it wouldn't be able to pivot, so I'll need a different solution. I figured these gear trims would be perfect, and I can support it with some bits from this metal toy. There we go, all mounted. The head's going to go up here, but we'll need a different solution to mount it. Armature wires should do the trick. There we go. But now this thing's a little top heavy, so let's fix that. I'll drill a little hole through the center here. And here. I didn't measure for either one of these holes. Man, I hope that doesn't come back to bite me in the butt later. The idea is to use a skewer as a pivot point and stabilizer. Glue one side to the top here. And that'll just slot into the bottom. Still a little front heavy, but at least that'll stop it from falling apart. Now I can get some chain to hang the wrecking ball from. Oh, also, we need a wrecking ball. I'm going to make it out of this sculpy clay. I've never sculpted anything before, but man, I sure did have a ball. 
have used some jewelry wire to make a hook to attach to the chain. While that was baking, I put the chain on. That crane that we turned into a neck also had this nice hook. But only one side had these rivets, so we'll have to add some more. I made the rivets out of this thin PVC sign. I think it said something about death sticks on it. Then I just super glued those on. Here's the wrecking ball fresh out of the oven. It's still hot. It's pretty heavy. It probably could actually do some damage to some cars. I found this piece in my project box, and eh, it fits here. Next thing was the arms, and it took me a while to find a good solution for this, but off camera I assembled this little thing out of that same metal toy that we used to attach the neck. I used some green stuff to secure it again. This side's gonna be a flamethrower, so I've used some pen caps for some tanks, and this gun will be the actual flamethrower itself. I used this same PVC sign with holes punched into it to make that kind of cooling shroud that goes over some guns. Okay, this gun will be made of the dollar store minigun. A spray bottle piece, pen part, and then I'll just wrap the shroud around the whole thing. Look, Ma, no hands. Then I slapped that on with some armature wire and super glue. Then this car body got to meet my pliers, and I attached it with the same method. The other arm gets almost exactly the same treatment, except it's a harpoon gun. I put this little piece on the head and gave it some back spikes. We still have to deal with it tipping over, though. So I've got these two parts from a tractor toy. This part fits perfectly right here. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, uh, sorry. Adding this metal armature really tied things together. And this cut up hair curler sealed the deal. Now I'll just put it back together. Whoa, when did that thing get teeth? Oh, right, I guess I did that. I cut them out of this PVC sign that I said I'd get back to. You can get this stuff in a couple different thicknesses. This one's about the thickness of a gift card. And it makes for really good metal paneling. You can cut it with scissors and it takes glue and paint really well. Once I got those spikes attached, I wanted some bits from this truck, so I took it apart. I also wanted some more exhaust pipes, but like, a lot more. I wanted most of them on the head here. These beautiful silver tanks can go on the sides here, 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 and here. Gave another car the plier treatment, glued that onto the back, and gave it some more back spikes. Then I got some thinner plastic sign and used a pokey tool to poke rivets into it from the back use that to cover up the windows on the car. A couple more rivet panels on the head here. That's it for the build, so next up will be painting. But let's take a look at this Mamba Jamba first. This thing is so menacing from the top of its pointy head to the bottom of its wrecking ball. And if that cannon isn't perfectly placed, I don't know what is. All right, enough of that. Let's get this thing painted. You've pretty much seen this process already, so let me just go real quick through these steps. Gray Prime, Red Terracotta Rust, and copious amounts of hairspray. I'm going to paint this thing like a construction vehicle, so the base coat is going to be this yellow color, and the wrecking ball gets a black coat. And with the brushes, we're going to do this in the right order this time, starting with the details. I brought most of my paints over because I'm not sure exactly what colors I'm going to use yet. I'm just going to start with black because I know that's what the wheels are going to be in. And I'm going to use this ink combined with a little bit of matte black paint. Wheels and tracks get that, and then I'm going to hit a couple of random bits. The next color I know for sure is the exhaust pipes are going to get a silver. The railing might as well too. Did this car in a dark green, but I ended up changing this later. The spikes were begging to be red. Silver flamethrower, black tank cannon, and armor plating. That's when I really started to figure out this color scheme. Tonka trucks are mostly yellow and black. This one's got a little bit of red in it too. But that's all the painting done. But the secret sauce to this is the weathering technique. I tried a couple things before I landed on a technique that I was really satisfied with. The goal here was just to rust up the very edges. So I tried this little makeup sponge first, but the problem was the sponge didn't really want to stay put. I tried a Q-tip, but it had the same problem. My trusty toothbrush did a pretty good job, but it was a little aggressive. Eventually I found out a wet paper towel was perfect for this kind of thing. I could be a lot more accurate and I could control how aggressively I was removing paint. So I just worked my way around the model, alternating between the toothbrush and the wet paper towel. It took maybe an hour to get it to where I wanted it to be. As I was doing this, I was thinking it might be cool to have a custom sponsor for these construction themed vehicles. Maybe there was a construction crew that survived the apocalypse and were the only ones that could build giant machines like this. I don't know, maybe I'll save that for a future project. But this little tyke has been fully weathered. Next, just a quick wash on the exhaust pipes and just a smidge of weathering powders. 
finally a matte top coat and we're ready to go. This thing was so much fun to make. So were all the cars in this video. If you ever have a chance to try out Gaslands, give it a shot. You might like it. So real quick before I cut out, I've never filmed anything like this before. And I owe some people some thanks for getting me into this hobby in the first place and for inspiring me to make a video about it. You can find links to the YouTube channels listed here in the description below. Thanks for watching. Here's your drinks, boys. Thanks, lady. Thank you, lady. I don't know, man. Sometimes it feels like I don't have any agency. It's like either I'm made to go someplace, uh -huh. or by the time I get there, it's like I was meant to be there. Yeah. It's almost like my choices don't even really matter. That's rough, buddy.